Yeah, so good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon for the session, for the second session of the online European Higher Education Fair 2024. So for this session, we have presenters who will be talking about our second topic on natural and applied sciences. So for our host, we have Mr. Miguel Angelo Galvez from our university partner, Ateneo de Manila University. Hi, hi everyone. Um, it's good to see you. Um, maybe um, if you guys um, uh, can open your camera, it would be good for our, you know, for our guests to see maybe uh, who they're talking to. But otherwise, um, feel free to uh, to uh, turn them off if uh, you can't uh, cover the bandwidth necessary for the internet connections. But otherwise, welcome to the session on natural and applied sciences. Um, again, thank you, Ms. Joyce, for introducing me. I'm Miguel Angelo Galvez from uh, the Ateneo de Manila Euro European Studies uh, Program. Um, unfortunately, Dr. Enverga could not be here um, today um, due to a prior appointment, but um, I'll be happy to fill in um, for uh, this session. Um, so we have here um, esteemed guests from European institutions, um, and who are you know, maybe these institutions are leaders in the natural and applied sciences, driving uh, innovations and uh, global changes at a high level of research and education. And they excel in a lot of areas concerning uh, uh, these uh, fields of sustainability, technology, environment, etc. And um, we hope to link you guys you know, to these strong pillars of academia and industry and society. Yeah. And um, particularly uh, with our guest today, we hope you find um, maybe opportunities that you might want to see in the future. And um, we they look forward really to answering your questions and um, getting insights from you guys as well. So just enough, just for a quick um, session uh, overview. Um, we have the speakers, and they will be giving their brief uh, presentations, approximately around three minutes each. And then uh, this will be followed by a Q&A session, um, which will uh, be moderated um, by yours truly. Um, and then um, the folks at EHEF will just help us out to uh, time our, uh, our session properly so that we don't overstay our our time here in the meeting room. But allow me first to introduce um, some of the speakers for today. And um, I assume this is the order that we will be going through later um, when they start their presentations. Um, maybe um, when I call your name and your institution, maybe you could uh, say a little hello to our guests here in the meeting room, um, just to so that they can be familiar with you guys. No. Um, first, with from Austria, no, from IMC Krems, we have Miss Anna Malishenko. Miss Anna. Well, actually, I'm not. I'm not Anna. I'm her colleague, so I'm uh, jumping in for her. She's not here today. Uh, so my name is Uwe Winner. I'm also teaching in the same program at IMC Krems. So I'm I'm a chemist, and I will talk about the chemistry program later. Thank you, sir. Oh, I didn't get that. What What was your um, name, sir? Sorry. My name is Uwe Winner. Uwe. Uwe and Rina. All right. Yes. Um, so um, that's for you know, IMC Krems. Um, next, for France University Grenoble Alp, uh, we have uh, Miss Alex Tandini. Is she here in the room right now? Or Miss um, Danaye Campagnol. Is she already with us? I don't think so. Um, wala pa, no? um maybe you know we can proceed. No, we can proceed with our other speaker for tonight, for today. Um, with uh, the University of Messina, uh, Miss Deborah Presti, are you here with us? Oh, Miss Christina, you will be all right. Go ahead, please. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm here on behalf of uh, Professor Deborah Presti, that uh, unfortunately couldn't be here. 
Thank you, Ms. Christina. Um, next for the University of Florence, we have uh, Ms. Cam Camila, Ms. Camila Debari. Good, good, good afternoon. You please uh, introduce her. Could you please uh, make yourself known to the to the room? <laughs> Hello to everybody. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, yes, I will present the University of Florence and sp special focus on uh, the course where I'm teaching at the School of Agriculture. Thank you. And then last but not the least, um, from Germany, from the University of Wenstaffen, uh, Triesdorf, uh, we have Ms. Ramona and uh, Ms. Oh, yes, yes, Ms. Mar Ramona and Ms. Miriam. Uh, Hello. Please, uh, hi. Hello, Good morning. And, here. Yeah, thank you for having us. I had just uh, problems with the microphone. I needed to change my my device. So now I think it works. Do you all hear me? Yes, yes, we, we hear you loud, Perfect. loud and clear. All right. Thank you. So these, these are just some of the speakers, STRA teams guests from today, and uh, we're happy to have them. Um, our session is brief, but um, we hope to gain a lot from this session. Um, they will be sharing, uh, again, brief presentations, but I hope um, uh, this will encourage people to consider studying in Europe uh, with a strong applied sciences and natural sciences program that they have. Um, so I guess we can begin um, for with Miss, with IMC, with, uh, um, with Miss uh, Anna. Oh, sorry, with Sir Uberin. Uberin. Everything fine. Thanks so much. I just need to share quickly the presentation, if that's possible. Okay, it should be working, I think. Yes, we can see it. Okay. Um, just a second. Okay, fine, now I see it too. Uh, so thank you for giving me the chance to present here. I had to rearrange in the beginning a little bit. I was under the impression that we're talking for half an hour for the, over the program. Uh, so. Um, I just tried to condense everything in a few slides. So um, we are located in Austria. Um, let's see if that, okay. So let's just jump to that. Uh, we are located in the Wachau region. That's pretty close to Vienna, about one hour away from, from Vienna by train or public transport. Um, it's an old city, actually, a small city with about um, 35, 40,000 people. Uh, our university is located directly um, um, in the vineyards, actually, of that place. So it's a wine region in Austria, a uh, very modern campus. Everything was opened about um, 20 years ago, the last building, and that's where I'm actually uh, sitting right now. Our lab building was opened last year, so we have state-of-the-art um, uh, lab uh, environment, but also um, our older buildings uh, are nice, uh, as you see that here, uh, some of our campus buildings are um, in the oldest buildings of town, which uh, date back to the 13th century, so it's a nice mix mixture overall. Um, here's just some pictures of that place where I'm right now, so uh, an old city. Uh, but now let's just focus on the programs that we are having, and I hope some of you are interested in that. Uh, we actually have uh, informatics, biotechnology, and chemistry in the field of applied sciences. And I'm here representing our chemistry program. So what you see here is the outline of our uh, bachelor program in six semesters. Um, we start with around 50 students per year, so we can focus on every individual actually in the program. We know everybody, uh, which is a very, very uh, a nice feature here, a very personal university. And we are focusing uh, on organic uh, and pharmaceutical chemistry on one hand, and um, um, on the other hand, analytical chemistry. 
everything with green chemistry, uh, sustainable chemistry, uh, so all those aspects are there. One thing that's very distinct for our bachelor program is already that we have a practical training semester where our students work in industry or academia for half a year, gain a lot of experience, and that's a really big bonus point. Another big bonus point that I would like to add is that we have a lot of external teachers and lecturers. So that means whoever is joining gets to know about uh, or people from about 30 different uh, universities and industrial um, um, or companies. So you would have a really nice network at the end of the program. So that's uh, just the outline. I'm happy to discuss anything later on. Uh, sixth semester, uh, we have the uh, choice or the opportunity to go into one of the fields. And then uh, that would be uh, either organic or in the, uh, the, the uh, instrumental analysis, as I said. Next year, we're also starting with a master program where we have a lot of digital components included. So it's state of the art, very, very modern from its outline. And um, yeah, it would give everybody a uh, good understanding of what's on the market, what's the new developments. Uh, we are focusing not only on the chemistry aspects, but also on law regulations, uh, because that is the key uh, for um, being uh, active in the chemical industry. And um, yeah, sustainability is a big issue, as you already can see from the name of the program. So that's basically it. I just want to show uh, some places where we could go for practical training semesters. We have several partner universities, a lot of industrial uh, partners as well. Uh, all our students are placed uh, not only in those, but in other partners as well. So it would be a great uh, place to start your career. And with that, I think I'm at the end of my three minutes. I want to thank uh, the organizers for giving me the chance here to present briefly our program. And I would be very, very happy if uh, one or more of you would like to join and come to CAMS to study chemistry. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, Dr. Uwe. Um, for any questions and uh, concerns later, um, please feel free to put them on the chat box so that we can address them um, later for Sir Uwe. But also, um, as well as the other sessions, no, uh, if, if you guys have, will have any questions directed to certain speakers or maybe all of them, please um, put them on the chat room later. But we can also entertain uh, um, students, people who have questions later uh, as we go by. Um, next, we can uh, have um, our, the folks from the University of uh, Grenoble out. Um, is Miss? Is Alex and Danae, Danae here? I don't think so. They're not yet uh, in the room. Um, then we can proceed maybe with um, Ms. Cristina from uh, Italy, from University of Messina. Yes. Good afternoon again, and thank you for having us today. I will... Uh, um... I'm sharing the screen so I can show you a quick video uh, of presentation of our master's degree. Um, okay, yes, just a moment. Okay. Here we are. Okay, could you see it? Yes, it's showing, Good thank morning. you. I am Deborah Presti, full professor of geophysics and president of the master degree course in geophysical sciences for seismic risk at the University of Messina located in Southern Italy. As you can see by these pictures, both Philippines and Italy were frequently struck by major earthquakes producing damaging to infrastructures, environmental people, and also cultural heritage. And also recently, uh, both the two countries have been struck by uh, heavy floodings. 
and these are aspects that uh, are dealing with in the framework of the course and that in particular focus on strategies for environmental risk mitigation and in particular on seismic risk mitigation. The master degree course in geophysical sciences for seismic risk lasts two years and in the end the students will debate a dissertation on advanced topics in geophysics and or in geology. The enrollment will be allowed to the candidates having a bachelor degree in scientific courses with basic knowledge of earth sciences. English language P2 level is required. Here I will show you uh, the didactic activities of this uh, master degree course. Um, so each picture is uh, related to one to the topics uh, to the subject of the course. So we have tsunami risk, meteorology and climatology, seismic risk, seismic induced chemical risk, environmental geology, quaternary geology and active tectonics, dynamical structures, fundamental applications of petrology, geophysical observation methods and remote sensing, and also laboratory of seismic data processing and field campaign, active and passive seismology, seismic monitoring and surveillance, applied geology and land use, physics of environmental processes, earthquake geotechnical engineering, physics for cultural heritage protection. Uh, so that you can see uh, the multidisciplinary approach of this master degree course, uh, including both subjects of geophysics and geology, but also subjects of physics and uh, engineering. As regards field activities, these are very important in the frame of the master degree course. And in these pictures, you can see the students that perform the practical activities, uh, both related to geology and to geophysics. In general, geophysics is a practical as well as a theoretical subject, and we like to enable you to explore both the aspects. Lessons are held in person. Attendance is not mandatory, but strongly recommended. As regards the assessment methods, they include oral examination, coursework, reports, and much more. Seminar activity, laboratory, and field activities will play a basic role in the formation of the students. As regards the internship opportunity, there are several solutions, uh, among these the Erasmus programs, but also the collaboration of the master degree course with the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology and also with CRAST, that is a consortium of several universities in Italy. To conclude, why choose Messina to study geophysics? Messina is one of the main places in the world paradigmatic of seismicity, with its millennial history of strong earthquakes. Messina University has a strong tradition in seismological and geophysical studies. In addition, in its long history, Messina has been the place of mixing of different cultures for the Mediterranean region and also outside. For all the above reasons, Messina is an ideal place for study geophysics with particular reference to earthquakes and seismic risk. Uh, I conclude showing you the uh, links to get many information about this master degree course. Bye. Um, okay. So I want to stop the sharing. Um, thank you for uh, this time. Thank you, Miss uh, Christina. Will you uh, share anything else or? No, no, no it's okay. All right. All <laughs> right. Um, I'm just trying to, to uh, remove the video. Okay, fine. Okay. <laughs> thank <laughs> you. Uh, for any questions, again, for any questions, please um, put them on the chat box. Of so if you have any questions to address to uh, our speakers.
Um, next, um, we'll have Miss Ramona and Miss Miriam from uh, Vehenstaffen uh, Three Stuff. I hope I said that uh, right. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. And um, it's a pleasure to be here today and to be able to present um, our university to you as well. I'm Miriam Fiastl Trotsky. I work at the international office at Campus Triestorf. And Ramona Müller is my colleague who works in the international office on our other campus in Weinstefan. So that's we are both here today because, well, as the name says, and I want to share a, a short presentation with you as well. Um, I hope you can see it already. Um, our university consists of two different campuses, namely the campus Weinstefan and our Triestorf campus. And so you can... Um, imagine a little better what it, this look looks like. Um, I brought these two maps for you. So we are located in the south of Germany in um, the biggest federal state, which is Bavaria. And on the right hand side, you can see Triestorf and Weinstefan, our two main campuses, which are about um, yeah two hour drive away from each other, about 150 kilometers. Um, and um, well, one of them, Weinstefan, is very close to Munich, a very famous city, of course, and um, Triestorf, where our work is very close, about half an hour to the city of Nuremberg. Well, um, that's for locations. So why, first of all, should you come to our university, to HSWT? Well, HSWT stands for Applied Sciences for Life, not only in teaching, uh, theoretically, but also in um, yeah, showing it practically. Um, we have a very strong practice-oriented education, which means close contact with potential future employers combined with scientific excellence. Um, we offer a unique portfolio focus, focusing on green engineering, and I will talk about this in a second. Um, and yeah, we offer also beautiful locations, a very familiar atmosphere which also contains um, yeah very intensive personal um, support um, due to our yeah very manageable um, student numbers of um, at Weinstefan about 3.6 thousand right now students and 2.1 thousand students at campus Triestorf so we are relatively small um, and um, yeah Nevertheless, we also offer a vibrant international student life with over 700 international students right now from all over the world. And um, a fifth reason to also join us that we mostly um, charge no tuition fee only for one very specific um, degree program. Um, and apart from this, no tuition fees are charged. Well, let's go on with our portfolio. So our degree programs, they cover agricultural sciences, um, digitalization and technology, nutrition and food, climate and environmental protection, ecology and environmental planning, and last but not least, the business and management. So as you can see, they are all highly relevant fields in our day-to-day -day life and our very globalized world and for our students or for those interested in our um, life sciences it's it's sometimes even hard to decide on one specific degree program well speaking of our study programs um we um, here on this slide put together those um, degree programs which are most relevant to you most probably because they are taught in English. And right now we offer five, um, uh, four English taught master programs at our two campuses, which are the master climate change management, the master international, um, the international master of landscape architecture, and the master international management of forest industries at campus Weinstefan. I put the fourth one in brackets because it will be suspended next year, just for you to know, but it will most probably be taken up again in the summer term 2026. Um, and at Campus Treestorf, we offer a master in farm management. 
Um, however, we will start five new English taught programs from next winter term onwards, which will be a Bachelor in Applied Informatics, a Master Digital Farming and the Master Resilient Horticulture at Campus Weinstefan, and two more Masters at Campus Triestorf, um, the Master Sustainable Regional Development and the Master Environmental Engineering. So five new um, English taught master programs, highly relevant and very, very um, up to date um, in the pipeline right now. And yeah, if you're interested, yeah, just contact us um, since I can't go into detail on them um, in this session. Well, last but not least, how to get on board as a degree seeking student. Of course, you have to hand in a university entrance qualification. Um, and um, a so-called VPD, um, which is uh, a preliminary review documentation for all bachelor programs and for most of our master programs. Um, for the master programs, you also have to prove that you have graduated in a relevant field um, in a bachelor degree, of course. And we also require a B2 language level, uh, B2 language skills in the language of um, study which yeah, most probably will be English. And you can apply online on our website. Um, in most cases, if not, it's also indicated on the website where exactly you have to apply. So um, that was it for um, yeah today, uh, input wise. Thank you for your attention. If you um, want more information, please visit our website or you can also look up our profile on EHEF, on the EHEF website. You'll find links and more information on this. And um, we will also upload our presentation in the chat, if that's okay. Thanks so much, um, Miriam. Um, I have You're glossed welcome. over, thank you. Um, I glossed over um, another university, I'm sorry. This is not the last um, university just yet, but we also have the University of Florence, uh, Ms. Camilla, who will be um, sharing um, uh, their program for um, this for the last uh, preceptor to boot. Ms. Camilla. Um, can you Camilla, hear me? Yeah, can can yeah. you hear me? Can you see my screen? Yep, yep. Thank you. Okay, thank uh, you very much. I'm Camilla Di Bari from the University of Florence. I will present the University of Florence and specifically the School of Agriculture. <clears throat> uh, the University of Florence, Florence is quite old. It was established in, nine, in, in 1321. And it um, has 20, 21 departments and 10 schools with mainly th uh, three cycles. The first cycle, which is a bachelor's degree, the second cycle, cycle, which is a master's degree, and the third cycle, which is a PhD. And 14 out of 250 programs are entirely taught in English, mainly de dealing with agriculture, architecture, engineering, humanities and education, mathematics, physics, and natural sciences. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the course that I would like to present is uh, of the uh, School of Agriculture, which is based in Florence, is uh, the Natural Resources Management for Tropical Rural Development, which is a master's degree of two years, um, two years. The University of Florence, I mean, Florence is, uh, I think, well known over all the world. We are placed uh, in a very nice area uh, inside the biggest park of Florence, quite uh, 10, 20 minutes walking from the very central part of the, of the city. And this course um, is uh, focused on agriculture production, keeping cultural diversity in the local traditions, land and water management resilient to climate change and sustainable food production, innovation, and rural development. It's a cutting age graduate program fully taught in English, uh, promoting research and professional training in the sectors of modern sustainable agriculture, 
animal science, science and natural resource management. Uh, it's two years uh, study plan. Uh, we have one first year, which is more general. And then the students are requested to decide to opt for one of the two curricula. One is uh, on agricultural production. The second one is in, in land and water. And uh, they are the students are required to earn a total of 120 uh, 20 academic credits, um, 93 for classwork, lectures, seminars, exercises, labs, and two, uh, 227 for the final thesis. Um, here you have the list of, uh, for, I mean, sorry, uh, for getting to the master, you have to need uh, to need the bachelor degree in agronomy, tree crops, or at least having a background of agronomy from your master. So you don't have from your from your bachelor, you don't have to be to have a bachelor in agronomy, but have done exams related to um, agronomy and have a, a European B2 level certificate of English. Mm, the yearly fee changes according to your family income, but there are several opportunities for scholarships and grant facilities for accommodation. Mm, this is the platform for applying as a student. Uh, usually the period, we have a period of pre-enrollment that uh, starts in December and ends uh, in April. <clears throat> uh, which are the job opportunities when you are graduated now at our master's degree? Mainly working at institutions like um, Joint Research Center, European Environmental Agency, or United Nations agencies like FAO, WFP, UNEP, and so on, or EFAD, and so on. Working at private and public firms operating in agro food sectors overseas. Uh, to become a project manager for your own ministries or become a project director or manager in several NGOs. This is the score of the, of the course, which is quite high. We have strong cooperation with several NGOs and we have also a peer-reviewed or um, journal for publication. So here you can see our contacts. Uh, I have reported here the, the coordinator of the, of the course, which is uh, Professor Giordani, and also the email of the school where, from where you can get several information and the website of our, uh, of our course. I am available for any questions you may need. And yeah. thank you for this opportunity and join this session. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um... Uh, Ms. Camilla. Um, so again, thank you to um, all our um, speakers for today. You know, um, they all gave us very concise and brief presentations, but nonetheless, uh, a lot of info that um, might interest a lot of our students here. Um, we can, Ms. Joyce, um, how many minutes do we have for the Q&A? Mr. Miguel, yes, we can allot the remaining five minutes for all the questions in the chat. Oh, box. okay, five Thank minutes. <laughs> um, maybe we can start with um uh, this first question from uh from well um maybe you can I see a couple of questions here about scholarships. Now maybe what we can do is we can ask each um speaker to maybe provide um some details about the scholarship opp opportunities that um they have maybe some particularly maybe some prerequisites, requirements, um, what you guys are looking for, and uh, maybe opportunities for Filipinos and, or Southeast Asian uh, uh, prospects, no? Um, maybe some anecdotal, uh, no, an anecdotal evidence as well of um, some, maybe you guys know of some Filipinos who have benefited from your programs in, uh, in the university. Uh, but otherwise, um, yes, um, maybe we can do that. No scholarship opportunities for each uh, speaker today. Maybe we could start with Sir uh, Uwe at Austria at Krems. Yeah. 
Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so we do not have full uh, scholarships for non-EU citizens, um, unfortunately. Uh, but what we have here is a merit-based uh, stipend that uh, students can apply for. And uh, they can apply uh, and get that once for their tenure at our university. Uh, that's about uh, 1,000 euro uh, for that scholarship that we are offering. Uh, beside that, uh, there might be uh, financial uh, support from, uh, from government sources, depending on the status. And um, maybe that, that's, um, uh, that's the case for, for some who have lived longer in Europe, who, who has uh, some background here, maybe family in Europe. Um, if you have that, uh, and if you have uh, that kind of evidence for four years, you're treated as an EU citizenship, at, basically uh, in, the, in that respect, uh, and only have to pay the, uh, uh, the, the, the study fee for EU citizens. That's what our university is offering. Yes, um, so um, that's for Austria. So just, just, so just for the information of the students, maybe uh, mm -hmm. the EU is quite generous no, with uh, giving scholarships to people who are staying there. Even if you're not a citizen, I believe that's how, uh, that's one opportunity that um, you might want to look at. Um, next, um, we have uh, maybe uh, Ms. Christina might also want to share about the scholarship opportunities. Yes, and we have two kind of uh, scholarship that maybe um, get from the students. We have some scholarship from the Italian ministry uh, that uh, every year uh, reserve funds for foreign students that wants to apply. And also in uh, Sicily, there is the region where uh, we are. There are some uh, scholarship for uh, all kinds of students, both uh, Italian and international, that can be that can apply to this uh, second type of uh, support. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Camilla, yes. Uh, maybe you could also share uh, some of the opportunities over at Florida. Yes, yes. Uh, we have some um, scholarship opportunities here at, at our faculty uh, because we have a strong relationship with, with the Agency for um, development and cooperation, which is called AICS. And usually they provide uh, yearly some uh, scholarship for, for us, specifically for our course. And uh, we have a long lasting um, cooperation with them. So also for job opportunities that, that could be also um, for graduate students, good opportunities when they, they graduate at our faculty. All right. And uh, Ms. Miriam, um, any um, scholarship opportunities for our uh, for our guests, uh, for our participants here uh, at uh, Applied yeah, Sciences? Think, yeah, thank you. As I already wrote in the chat, uh, we offer some um, scholarships for international students who already study at our university so not like in advance when they are in the application process um, but they are small scholarships and students need to be aware that they can't cover their entire costs of living um, with these scholarships um, to apply for full scholarships I would advise them to check the DAAD scholarship a database for um, scholarships for non-EU students um, and there they might find um, some scholarship opportunities but they should be aware that they have to apply for those scholarships quite in advance so about um, a year in advance so this is the two things I can say so maybe Maramona you can add something um which might be explicitly for the Philippines, but I'm not aware of uh, specific scholarships. So I also don't know about specific scholarships for the Philippines, but I added the links to the DAD scholarship database and also to our website where you can find a description of those smaller scholarships provided directly by our university. So you can find the links now in the chat. Thank you. Thanks everyone for um, that. Um, now there's a question regarding presentations. Uh, just to inform everyone here, um, our guests will be uh, sending their presentations to the EHEF Secretariat and uh, 
expect that um they will be sharing uh this material to you guys uh um by whatever means they will be uh, employing um so any more questions let's see um are there any other questions from from Jeff Pacania um this is for applied sciences HSWT um I'm very interested in MS environmental engineering. I come from a BS in mechanical engineering background, but he has been working, this person has been working for six years related to environmental and sustainability engineering. Are there any bridging courses that he could apply for, he or she could apply for to uh, with HSWT? So um, I'm not aware of bridging courses for the master, um, but there are, um, yeah, before the semester starts, there are offered some kind of revisional courses um, to kind of update your level in the specific subjects. And this will be announced on our website as well when they will take place. Um, we start our semester on the 1st of October usually. Um, and in advance, like in September, usually those bridging courses are offered and you don't have to apply. Yeah, you just register for them. If you're admitted to the to the study course, you just register for these um, as well. And you have to come then a little earlier and start your semester earlier. So maybe, um, well, the environmental engineering master's program is quite new. It will only be introduced next year. Um, but maybe send us an email and then we can also talk to the degree program coordinator and um, see if you fulfill the admission requirements or not. All right. So I hope uh, maybe um, the UGF can also help our participants here and our guests here to link up um, um, students, or I mean, uh, graduates who may want to be interested in the graduate programs that our speakers are offering. Um, someone asked about... Um, requirements for exams in order to apply for the University of Florence and uh, Ms. Camilla posted um, some of the pre-enrollment application requirements um, on the chat box. You might be interested to look there. Will you add anything to that, Ms. Camilla? You might want to say something. No, sim no just, just a few things. So yeah, what I would suggest for students who are interested in, in um, attending our master is to send an email and uh, make the pre-enrollment because uh, when as soon as we re receive the uh, the interest from students, we analyze their CV and uh, CV in terms of uh, exams that they have done during their bachelor, and then we 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 provide the I mean the um, some suggestions if they have to integrate some exams or if they are. Um, Educational background is sufficient for starting our master's. All right, thanks, Camila. Um, are there any other questions? I, I think um, based on our time, we might be able to accommodate one. One last question, if there are any. You can put them on the chat box or raise your hands here on Zoom. Um, maybe about the course offerings or programs requirements. Any questions? Well, um, if none, Miss Joyce, I guess we can um, conclude. Shall we conclude the program or maybe we might want to have, all right. Um, so thank you to all the speakers um, today for uh, the session. Uh, as um, I hope everyone uh, no, uh, no, um, got a lot from the session. Uh, these are not just, um, as you can see with what they printed, presented, these are not just uh, theoretical courses, but very practical and applied um, MA programs that um, when you take a look at it, at, at this level, um, they are really highly relevant, especially here in the Philippines. Now. So um, these, I hope you guys are able to reach out to our guests here today and maybe find out potential opportunities that will really, really uh, impact um, our uh, 
locality, etc. Um, thank you again to um, our guests here today for um, highlighting um, very, very briefly but very uh, concisely what um, their programs offer. Um, I also encourage other, other attendees to um, join the upcoming sessions um, throughout the day and, or visit the website of EHEF for other uh, opportunities and schedules. Um, their contact details are on the Facebook pages and other uh, platforms for you to to um, link up with. Also with the no no also with the our speakers here today, um, they uh the the their university websites probably have um the contact details you will need up to to link to get to know opportunities that might um for those interested in studying. Um, EHEF might also be able to help you guys enough to link up with our esteemed guests here. Um, but with that, um, thank you again, everyone, for joining. Um, for any uh, questions or concerns, um, you may contact the EHEF secretary. And I hope a lot of you here will, you know, might be interested. Might um, I hope you guys were galvanized though, by this uh, session and. Um, I hope the our guests here see you see some of some you know um, interested uh, participants in the future. So uh, thank you, thank you everyone, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank Have you. a nice day. Bye bye. bye. Thank you. All the best. Bye.